Hi, you're on the Bible Forum. I'm Warren Sprouse. We're here every Sunday night from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern. Love for you to join us live. You can join the folks in the chat room. I want to talk to you tonight about the media and its effort to make news. According to a Friday report from the Washington Post, Amy Coney Barrett, recent Supreme Court Justice candidate, had already tested positive for COVID-19 just this past summer, a reality which will likely leave her at a decreased risk of contracting it again, given that only a handful of reinfections have been confirmed. The judge's most recent test, which took place Friday morning, also came up negative, according to, White, to a White House spokesperson. But now, a 14-year-old advertisement advocating an end of Roe v. Wade, signed by both Judge Barrett and her husband, has the Democrat senators all of Twitter. The ad read, It's time to put an end to the barbaric legacy of Roe v. Wade and restore law that protects the lives of unborn children. The advertisement made it clear that life begins at conception. Now, Democrats are upset because Judge Barrett did not disclose her affiliation with this advertisement. Of course, by law, she didn't have to. She didn't have to because it's not a document that she either wrote and it's not an article that she edited. It seems candidate judges are required to reveal any and all citations of books, articles, reports, letters to the editor, editorial pieces, and other published material you have written or edited. Can you remember anything, everything you signed 14 years ago? A White House spokesperson told NBC that Barrett did not have to disclose the signature because she neither wrote nor edited the ad. But also, while not outright calling Trump a white supremacist, Fox News' John Roberts, the president, uh, asked the president for a definitive repudiation of white supremacy. In so doing, he asked what he called a question that needs to be asked, and clearly the president's Republican colleagues a mile away from here are looking for an answer, too. An assistant press secretary and a black man, his name is given only as Fields, answered the question deciding to add his perspective on the matter. He said, as a black man serving in the Trump White House, I have been firsthand this administration's unwavering support of communities of color. He added, at real Donald Trump has not only denounced all forms of hatred and bigotry, but he has taken action to advance and empower minorities in America. And yes, the president has made lowering black unemployment and implementing criminal justice reform key priorities in his administration, although a thorough re recap recapitulation of those seems super erogatory, superfluous, unnecessary. People talk in highfalutin terms. Then there was the the first presidential debate. Moderator Chris Wallace apparently felt the need to ask President Trump to condemn white supremacists and militia groups and to say they need to stand down in divided cities like Kenosha, Wisconsin, and Portland, Oregon. The president did, though he seemed confused regarding the far-right Proud Boys responsible for a number of skirmishes, especially in Portland. Trump told them to stand back and stand by. He would clarify those remarks the day after the debate, saying, I can only say they have to stand down. Let law enforcement do their work, he told reporters. Law enforcement, he said, will do the work more and more as people see how bad this radical liberal Democrat movement is and how weak. Of course, that didn't stop in a, a testy exchange between John Roberts and President Sec Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany. On Thursday, Roberts said, I'd like to ask you for a definitive declarative statement without ambiguity or deflection. Quote, as the person who speaks for the president, does the president denounce white supremacism and groups that espouse it in all their forms? McEnany said, this has been answered yesterday by the president himself three times. 
Yesterday, he was point blank asked, do you denounce white supremacy? And he said, I've always denounced any form of that. She says, I can go back and read for you in August 2019. In one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. And then she launched into a litany of comments the press has made against these efforts, KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups. And he, she said he has condemned white supremacy more than any president in modern history. Roberts didn't need to ask McEnany, though. He could have gone to his wife, ABC's Kira Phillips, who'd asked the president roughly the same question and gotten an answer that wasn't materially different. McEnany noted on her Twitter account. This is what's happening in the age of Trump. People that, quite honestly, I thought <clears throat> were pretty straight arrow are starting to show up on the other side of the fence. Are they trying to make news? Are they trying to unseat the president? Are they carrying water for the left? I don't know. It just may be they're trying to get their face in the news that day, get something online. I don't know. But this president has had more trouble with this sort of thing than anybody I've ever known. And it doesn't seem to bother him.